Hello and welcome to this bonus video that comes with your purchase of RC Course for Littles 2.0. This video is all about how to develop the work habit, which boy, I have recently learned it is so critical to developing good study habits. The two really go in hand in hand. And if you have poor uh, work habits, work ethic, you're gonna have poor study habits and vice versa. If you have good work habits, you're gonna have great study skills. So they really are connected and I'm gonna show you why in this video and how to go about from a very early age developing that work habit to have great success when it comes to homeschooling. So the first thing I wanna go over is what is the purpose of education? I think today we're kind of losing our way and we think it's the pursuit of this paper and it's to, let's face it, a lot of times kids today are getting into massive debt and they're going after these uh, careers and hoping that they can buy themselves this piece of paper, paper to get out of work. <laughs> that seems to be the goal, however, education is actually for the purpose of work. That is truly the reason why we get an education in the first place, so that we can effectively work. However, there's a difference. There's such a thing as just the work where you feel like you're just carrying out a work sentence, and then there's the kind of work where you feel you are a co-worker with the creator. You are doing something together along with your purpose, your goals, and your vision. That's what education is for, so that you can have the latter, right? You can have that feeling of actually doing something with your life and working smarter, not just harder. That's the purpose of education. So to quote Ella Francis Lynch, the main object of life is not knowledge, but work. The use of knowledge is to enable us to work intelligently and without loss of time. That loss of time, that is really critical, right? We do not sufficiently value work as a means of mental development today. We don't. And its possibilities are unexhaustible. Work can really be instrumental in mental development, not just studying and learning and all of that, but work as well. Now, if you lack a work habit, then you will naturally dislike work. However, if you just keep working on it, then even the tasks that you dislike at the moment can actually become enjoyable. Now, I really believe this, looking at generations from the past and what we have going on today, in order to produce good citizens, you need to instill in them respect for labor, as well as giving them early on experiences developing the work habit that it becomes part of their identity early on. Now, I'm not talking about just showing them how to perform certain tasks around the house. I'm talking about really teaching them developing that work habit. And obviously we're not talking about child labor here, right? We're just talking about things that they can do around the home that are well within their capabilities. And really you see this as parents early on, kids naturally want to help, they want to work, they want to please you, they wanna be a part of the team, they wanna contribute. And it's only when parents kind of <laughs> just, ignore it and let it slip that then they become maybe more self-centered or slothful or lazy and really whatever you see you've encouraged so if you're seeing later on that they don't respect labor they want to get out of work then in some way shape or form you have to come to terms that you've encouraged that so we want to change that right right here from the very beginning it starts when they are very young. So that's what we're talking about in this video. How do you do that? How do you go about developing that work habit so it's part of their experience, part of their identity? So to do this, we want to develop their character and habits. And that comes from repeated tasks that increase in difficulty to achieve a higher purpose or greater experience. So the two sides of the coin as they're growing up is the habit of practical work and the other is mental exertion, right? Studying, those are the two sides of the coin in those early foundational years. So it used to be in the past that boys would spend a great deal of time with their father outdoors, you know, doing chores, working around the house, and the girls were inside with their mother, taking care, running the household from the inside. And it was very rare that you would see a child 
who was involved in that sort of dynamic then come to school and just totally shirk their work. <laughs> it just didn't happen. Generally, if they were a good worker at home, they were a good worker at school. Now, this might be a little difficult for us to hear and stomach today, but a lot of these labels or learning challenges, what is it, authority, opposition disorder, or um, just a lot of other labels that I can think of, Back then, a teacher would just say that the child is being lazy and their parents never taught them how to work. That would be the label back then. So I'm gonna give you a blueprint here of two main ways. Number one is to take account of the child's dormant sense of responsibility, they all have it, that may be awakened by the mere recognition of its presence, so just bring attention to it. Number two, give a small child daily regular tasks suited to their strength increasing with ability to perform them. So even a three, four year old, they can dress themselves, button their buttons, tie their shoes, they can hang up clothing. You know, five years old, obviously they can fix their bed, put away toys. They can run from here to there, be your runner in the home to save mom steps, right? And this is actually something that I talk about in my Sustainable Homeschooling 101 course. In that first mindset portion, I talk about running the home in a franchise mentality versus small business. Small business, mom is doing everything and she's getting burnt out versus franchise, everybody has their part and you delegate tasks to the lowest skill level possible. So there are a lot of things such as, yes, maybe certain laundry only older kids could do, but little kids can fold towels, they can fold linens and things like that. So it's looking at every task, everything that needs to be done in the home and breaking it down to who is the person with the lowest skill level that can accomplish it. And so that leaves the older kids doing tasks only they can perform and the younger kids are helping out. And likewise, just like at a franchise, you start to promote from within. Don't just rely on your older kids to do all the work and then the younger ones kind of get spoiled in a past, no graduate those older ones, have those older ones teach the younger ones how to take over their responsibilities because obviously they will be leaving the home and it's going to fall on those younger ones. And if they weren't taught this, they weren't given increasingly difficult uh, challenges as a stepping stone to a higher purpose, then they're gonna resist it obviously. So it's very important that you delegate right, to the lowest skill level possible. And as they grow older, you increase it. And the older kids move on to other things and they pass down their responsibilities to those younger kids. And again, everybody's just increasing in difficulty. And so those older kids, when they leave the home, they can run a home, right? Because they've gone through the whole process. They have went through that increasingly difficult experiences and tasks and challenges. So don't miss this, this is really important and if you are interested in that, I will leave down a link down below to my Sustainable Homeschooling 101 course where I cover that in detail. So you might be asking yourself, what does all this have to do with school? Well, a lot, because this is where they develop their powers of concentration. It is both fundamental and the first requisite of success and the safest guarantee of success. Somebody who can focus on a task and complete it start to finish is the same kid who can start a task with school and focus on it, concentrate on it, and again, complete it from start to finish. It's the same child who can do both. And if you wait for them to just catch this on in college, it's going to be too late which is why a lot of kids end up flunking out. And so let's talk about how this would translate in college. They'd have this textbook and maybe they look at it, they read it and wow, it's really difficult for them. However, they think to themselves, okay, well this is not written in Chinese or Hebrew, this is written in English, so I can read this. I will simply take one sentence at a time. And if there are words in that sentence that I don't understand, then I will look them up in the dictionary. I will not move on to the next sentence until I have mastered and understood the first sentence. And I will continue to build upon it until it all weaves together and I understand the context and I comprehend the text. This is actually something that I teach my children very early on. If they're reading their math book and they're having a hard time or their RC book, I tell them this. Don't move on to the next sentence until you have fully understood and mastered that first sentence. Build upon it. 
don't move on until you have mastered that first step, that first sentence, that first problem, whatever it may be. And they continue on with that persistence. That's what the work habit looks like translated into a college environment. And so when you have a student that's having a difficult time concentrating on their work, whether it's right now with homeschooling or when they're in college, it's because of one or two things. Either the work is much higher or lower than their capabilities or because they were not properly taught the work habit. It's either one of the two. Because let's just be really honest here. If you see your kids and they are able to concentrate for a long period of time on building Legos, or playing video games, playing a board game, uh, playing outside, just digging holes, whatever, they are concentrating on a task for a long period of time. They are capable of doing it. So if you look at that and you think to yourself, if only he would concentrate or focus like that on school, the way he does with his toys or video games, if you're thinking that to yourself, then I'm sorry to say, to quote Ella Francis Lynch here, the sad reality is that he has not learned the greatest lesson of all, to do exactly what he is told to do. That is so true. And this is the same thing that Dr. Robinson says, kids that don't sit there and do their schoolwork until it's completed, it's a discipline problem. It's not a school problem or the curriculum or anything like that, it's a discipline problem. And so you have to deal with that first before you can continue on with any curriculum, especially a self-taught curriculum. So what this looks like is if you tell them, pour in a cup of rice in the Instapot, they are pouring in a full cup of rice, not half a cup of rice or you know a quarter cup, losing interest and running away to play with their toys. They must complete whatever task that you give them. So obviously be reasonable with the task that you give them. Know that they are within their uh, capabilities, but make sure that they follow through with the whole task. If you ask them to pick a whole cup of berries for you, it should not come back half full. They should go out there and pick that whole cup. And these things sound really small, but if you just keep building on them, you will see this being instilled into their character. And I'll give you a, an example just yesterday, something that happened. Uh, my husband was working on the pool and, and getting it all cleaned up and he had to go get more chlorine for it. And there was so much debris because we've been in monsoon season and there's been a lot of debris in the pool. And so sometimes the vacuum would get stuck with rocks or palm leaves or whatever. And so he told us before he left, hey, every uh, 20 minutes, if you can, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, go out there and check to see that there's no debris in the vacuum. So it's not just running and, and stuck. So we're like, okay, well, my daughter uh, said she would take care of it. She would go on and check. So she was taking the vacuum out of the pool because she thought it was stuck with something and the cord came out, you know, the suction came out from the pool and so it was not working anymore. So she came in and told me, maybe thinking if I was gonna fix it, but I was not, I was busy doing something else. And I said, oh, well, just leave it there until dad gets home because it is difficult with the suction to, uh, you know, put connect the tube back in. So I said, it's okay, just uh, leave it for dad to do. So unbeknownst to me, she had gone back out there, she jumped in the pool and she managed to connect the hose back up. She came back in and she said, nope, I wasn't gonna disappoint dad today. I went in and I fixed it, I did it. And I was really, I don't wanna say proud of her. I would be proud of her regardless, but I was really happy for her that she had that work ethic that she had that respect for her parents she wanted to please them and she wanted to complete a task she wanted to make sure she, that she she wanted to make sure that she fulfilled all her obligations all the responsibilities that were laid upon her that's when you know and, and it clicks that they're going to be okay in life they can acquire all of the knowledge and information that they want as long as they have this work habit does that make sense even if you feel like you come short as a parent, you can do this. And it will be a tremendous gift that you give them in life for them to be truly successful. I hope that you found this bonus video encouraging and helpful so you can see just a very practical way how to go about this in your day-to-day -day life. And you will see 
incredible results. I promise you that. If you're just consistent with this, you will see results. You will be so happy for them, for the person that they are becoming because you know that they will be able to achieve anything that they want in life if they have this work habit. All right, I'll see you in another video. Talk to you soon.